Hey guys, I want to talk today about this Harbor Freight Diamond uh, Diamond Life Knife Sharpener. Um, typically I've always avoided cheap like Harbor Freight style sharpeners because, you know, let's face it, you get what you pay for in life and I don't, you know, when it comes to sharpening my tools, I don't like to trust cheap things. But um, I decided to give this a try and see and uh, we're going to talk about this thing, the good and the bad. Uh, I picked it up for like around $10. I think it goes up or down depending on whether it's on sale. It comes with this little plastic base. And uh, the block comes out. You don't have to use the base. Of course, doing this on camera is always a pain. And it has the grits clearly labeled on the side. And we're going to turn this up to 200 grit. Just to, uh, we're going to give you a little demonstration on how this thing works. And these, uh... Diamond stones are real simple. They're basically metal with like a diamond, almost like a paste, applied onto them. And they have these little cutouts so that the metal from your, your tool has a place to run off to. Uh, generally, they're, they're very well uh, thought of because the diamond lasts a long time and they're able to get it a lot flatter. And you don't have the issues with, uh, like with a lot of sharpening stones where they... they uh, hollow out in the center and all that so the diamond stuff is is getting to be very popular and what i want to see here is is one of these uh cheap ten dollar ones are they worth it because you know the good ones if you go online and look the good diamond sharpeners are in that fifty to hundred dollar price range so is a ten dollar one worth it well it depends on what you're using it for no i would not use this on you know a four hundred dollar knife no way no way jose but for when it comes to sharp, rough sharpening tools, starting things out, you know, things that don't need a lot of precision, this is actually really good. Um, my biggest complaint, of course, is that what you have here is a plastic block with these diamond plates glued onto them. They are not flat. So if you're going to use this for any kind of lapping, like you would like the back of a chisel or a hand plane, you know, it's not the greatest because you can see, like, some of the plates come up a little bit. They're not glued very well at all and they're not flat I mean you hold these things and you look at them and you can see they're nowhere close to flat so that's kind of the big disappointment now as for wear <coughs> I've been using this for quite a while now I actually sharpened a lot of tools at least got them started on this and then uh, use some better stuff to finish them off but to do the rough rough uh, re-edging I used uh, this and it's actually held up very well even though uh, it's got a lot of use on it the uh, diamond uh, has not worn down. A lot of people say that uh, you get these and the diamond wears down in no time. This actually has uh, been around for quite a few months and seen a lot of use and <coughs> the diamond is still in great shape. You don't have to use any lube with this which is also awesome. You can. I believe you can use oil if you choose. I don't. I like it raw. A little raw dog action. So what we got here, just for a little demo purpose to show you, is a really old beat up Stanley uh, chisel, probably a quarter inch that I picked up at a uh, flea market. So we're going to run through and show you what a quick sharpening looks like in one of these. So we set it to the 200 grit, which is the lowest, and we're going to start just by, uh, whoop, it's going to frame here, lapping the back. We're just going to put this flat on and rub it all over. We're trying to flatten out the back, get some of the oxidation and rust and some of the patina off there so that when we uh, do the edge, we have a nice finish. As you can see, it already took off a lot of material. You can see it's not, it's probably the chisel's not level as opposed to the diamond. We can see it's, you know, we'll see in a matter of a couple minutes, it should be nice and flat. But you can use this for knives, you can use it for tools. I like it for tools, I don't really like using something like this for my knives, but for something like this, a beat up $6 uh, chisel, no problem. So as you can see, we're already making some good progress, even in, you know, a couple of seconds in uh, smoothing out and flattening this back. But we're not going to spend all day on this because you guys didn't watch this to... Uh, Watching this to watch me sharpen something. So we're just gonna give this a quick little 
work on the 400. And we'll pop on the 600 so you can see what this uh, edge is going to look like after the 600, which I think is good to know if you're doing this kind of work, guys. You can see what kind of a edge you're going to get. You can see it's already picking up a lot of material. And when you're done, just wash it off. Run it under some hot water, put some soap on it. Cleans up very easy. Okay. So you can see that kind of polish the edge quite a bit. Still got some high spots and low spots, but you'd have to work those out via time. So we're gonna go back to the 200 real quick. It goes to show you couple of minutes even with this cheap cheap tool you can do uh, quite a bit of work so we're doing this all by hand guys we're gonna after we're done with this which you're not gonna see in this video we're going to uh, get this thing up to about a thousand grit on a nice fine sandpaper but for now at least this gives you a demonstration of how easy this uh, diamond sharpener is to get things started. Okay, you can see we got quite a low spot on this chisel here. But it happens. That's what it is. Every once in a while you will catch the edge on one of these holes. Okay, we've already removed quite a bit of material. That low spot's gonna take time, so we're just gonna move on just for the sake of this video. Go to the 400, give it a couple strokes on that. Then we're gonna go to the 600 and show you the finished project product. And there is no difference, guys. I don't see any difference whatsoever between using it one way or the other, or even doing circular motions or anything. I really don't see much of a difference. Okay, there you go. See the low spot's still there, but we made a lot of progress. Let's put this on 600, finish it up, and then we'll give you a quick, get that back a little touch up there. In case we're developing a burr on the back. So make sure we're in a frame. I hit this up with the 600 and then we'll show you how it cuts. Yeah, for a 10 hour Harbor Freight thing, I find this pretty useful. I tend to use it quite a bit for things like this. It helps me get tools like this started without uh, wearing down my good sharpening stones. I can uh, play with this and, and you know, this is a dirty tool too, by the way, so it's like, I don't have to worry about uh, getting so much gunk and grime on my good stuff. And if I wear this out, I can always just buy a new one, you know? Okay. Uh, we'll back a little polish. And one of the things that I do to help give these uh, chisels a good uh, sharp edge, to help take away the burrs, just kind of lift it a little and run it lengthwise all right so there you go what was that a couple of minutes and we got some uh, cardboard here from another video we're gonna see how good we did uh, not very smooth but it is cardboard I don't think I have a piece of paper handy let me see Actually, I got some sandpaper handy. It's a good test. Alright, here's our sandpaper. And it does. It cuts. I'm trying to do this on camera, so it's a little tougher than... Oh, not so well.
Yeah, it cuts a little. It's on that ver edge of cutting, which is good for 600 grit. Typically, you're going to need to go to 1,000 grit or more to get a really good refined edge. But for 600, I'm actually pretty happy with that, with the, uh, for the t how quick and how, how little effort I put in. It's uh, not so sharp. It's kind of skating off my thumb a little bit. Uh, a really sharp one will dig in, but no way it's sharp enough to shave. But yeah, for uh, a couple of minutes on a uh, diamond sharpener, that's actually uh, not bad at all. So Harbor Freight has kind of a, a nice little product, and that got me started. So now from here, I'm going to go and move on to uh, some, uh, I'll start with sandpaper. I'll probably start with like 500 grit sandpaper, work up to 1,000, and I'll have a really nice sharp tool. And uh, in the end, all i got to do is just wash this off and get all the grime and gunk and all that, and fantastic. So, like I said, I'm not, I'm not going to use this for a $200 knife. I wouldn't even use this for a $20 knife. But when it comes to getting these old, dirty chisels started, bringing them back to life, I have no problem using this. And uh, I've been doing it for, you know, I've done quite a few chisels, hand planes, and all that on it. And it's been uh, pretty good so far. Like I said, it's not perfectly flat. The diamond plates are a little not glued very well, but for what it is, not too bad. It's a little easier to maintain than the uh, regular sharpening stone.